Hey guys, so today I just wanted to do a good old fashioned faves and fails video. It's been a while since I've done one of these and I just wanted to share some products and product combinations and also just like techniques that I've been loving. I also have a couple of fails, not like total fails, but just things that I'm not loving that I thought I would share too, the products that I wanted to update you guys on anyway. So let's go ahead and get into it. I feel like I have a lot to talk about today. So the first thing I've been loving is a kind of a technique combo more than anything and that is wearing a matte sunscreen underneath a glowy foundation. That combo is just like such a winning combo for me in the summertime because in the summer, in the hot weather, I have very combo skin. It does lean a little bit oily in the T-zone, but I'm also prone to dry patches like around my chin and stuff. So, so I just feel like that is the perfect balance for me. Today, the combo I'm wearing is the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense as my sunscreen it has SPF 30 and the Ilia Skin Tint winning, winning combo right there. I love the way my skin looks. I wore the same exact combo yesterday and it wore so well. Like even at the end of the night, my skin still looked good. The matte sunscreen just does a good job of kind of keeping any oils at bay, but then the glowy foundation kind of adds a lot of life back to my skin and just the two together just play so well. Um, I love that Paula's Choice sunscreen. I also, another one that I really love is the Everyday by Unsun tinted sunscreen, honestly very similar to the Paula's Choice. I also just had my annual sunscreen roundup go live a few days ago, so I'll link that for you below. These were both included in that one. I compared and ranked 12 different mineral sunscreens, and you know, I used to not be a matte sunscreen person at all, but I've lately really come around on them and I can really see the value in them. Even for somebody with dry skin or dry patches, there is definitely a time and place for a matte sunscreen in my routine. I especially just love pairing it with a glowy foundation. This Ilia skin tint is so good. It is expensive. This is something I could genuinely see myself using up and repurchasing because it just, I don't know, it just it's one of those products that makes me happy. It makes me feel really beautiful when I wear it. And I just think that's, to me, that's like, that's kind of worth the price tag. I also love that it has SPF in it, especially in the summertime. I love wearing a foundation that has SPF in it. I just like having that extra layer of protection. And I just love how kind of hydrating and plumping this is. I'm also wearing the Kosas concealer. This is so good too. It's also pricey but it just looks like skin. And this is the kind of base product that I've just been really into recently as the weather has gotten warmer. It looks good even in the humidity, even if I'm gonna get sweaty, it's still, it just kind of looks like a second layer of skin. Like the Ilia one, it kind of just, it's almost like it becomes one with my skin. It sort of just like forms a layer of very skin-like coverage. It still has really good coverage though. So I've really been loving that lately. I also have to mention the Pipette SPF 50 Mineral Sunscreen. This is such a good sunscreen. I feel like now that I've finally put up my sunscreen roundup, I can finally talk about this. I mean, I've already talked about it before too, but now I can really talk about it now that the secret's out, my favorite mineral sunscreen of the year. It is an incredible value. You get four fluid ounces or 120 mils, which is more than double a standard face sunscreen. You can use this on the face and body. I only use it on my face and it's just such a good bang for your buck, but it's also just a really nicely formulated mineral sunscreen. It's not tinted. On me, I don't get a white cast. It really does blend in pretty much clear. It does go on white like most mineral sunscreens that aren't tinted do, but it really just, it does sink in after you've blended it in and it, it wears great under makeup. It is very hydrating. I will say if you want something that's going to set down and that's not gonna feel kind of like tacky on your skin, you're definitely wanna, gonna wanna opt for like a tinted matte sunscreen, like the Unsun or the Paula's Choice, a super light one, but if you have dry skin or you just don't mind kind of feeling that moisture on your skin throughout the day, this is so good. I really can't believe how good it is. I feel like mineral sunscreens have come a long way. So if you gave up on mineral sunscreens in the past, I, I totally understand because I did too for a while there, but there really are some good ones out there now. All right, so let's go back to makeup. As you can tell, here's a kind of color combo favorite that I've been loving right now, and that is peach and blue. I don't know why, I just cannot stop wearing this color combo. It is such a fun combo. It's so bright and fresh for the spring and summer. It's like all I wanna wear lately. So for today's look, I did film a demo of this. I'm actually wearing the ColourPop Miss Bliss palette, which is such a fun like peachy pink palette for the spring. I'm wearing the shade Woe, which is this kind of yellowy peach in the crease. And then all over the lid, I have Intuitive, which is a little bit more of like a corally peach color. Blended that out together. And then 
in my inner corner and as my like subtle winged liner, I'm wearing this Urban Decay shadow stick in the shade Fishbowl. This is like a rediscovery for me, and I don't necessarily think you need to buy this product specifically. It's just something I happen to have, and so I've been using it. But if you have an eyeshadow that's this color, you can also use that for the same purpose. But that I just popped in my inner corner and used like an angled liner brush to make that subtle wing. I just love that peach and blue together. They're so bright. And I've been loving colorful shadows, but kind of muted colors. And I just think like it still makes a statement, it still pops, but it also feels very brightening and light and fresh. So the star of the show and the star of like every look that I've worn for the past two weeks is from the Clarity Cosmetics Somer Amazing palette, the shade O Ship. I rolled this into my pan, those eyeshadows recently, and I feel like that was just a sign from the universe that I needed to rediscover this shadow because I was not appreciating it. And really all the shimmers in this palette, I think O Ship though is my favorite shade. It's, oh my gosh, it has like a very kind of sheer peachy base and then a yellowy green gold reflect. And it just makes the most stunning topper over anything. Like it will transform any look. It looks beautiful layered over a green, over a gold, over a purple, over a peach, or a bronze. Like it, it'll just take any look and transform it into something just unreal. Yeah, so today I just have that lightly tapped all over the lid. I love how I can just get kind of messy with it. I can just tap it all the way from lid to brow bone and it just looks very special, but also without looking incredibly bright and in your face. Like I feel like this is something that, you know, if you work an office job, this is the kind of color that you can still wear. It still makes a really beautiful statement. You're probably going to get a lot of compliments on it, but it's not so bright and in your face that it feels out of place in like an office setting. So I, I am just head over heels in love with that shade. I kind of wish that I could just have that shade like in its own little compact too, but I've been having fun just reaching for this palette also. Yesterday I wore the matte peach in my inner corner and that on the lid. I've just been doing various iterations of that same look a lot over the past few weeks. But the other shimmers in here are gorgeous too. This um, kind of mint and pink duochrome one. I mean, wow. Can you believe that? Just been loving. Another just technique that I've been loving is just a color, a pop of color in the inner corner. Today I've got that light blue, but I've also been loving like a mint green in the inner corner. Like I have that um, mint green single from ColourPop in my pan, those eyeshadows. That's super fun. And then pairing that with then a colorful wing, either a matching color or a different color. Like I've been loving having one color in the inner corner and then doing like a winged liner with this pastel yellow from NYX that's in my project pan right now. Just any color combination you could think of, two pastel colors or just two complementary colors, any combination you could think of like this and like a light purple, a mint green, a light pink, a peach, like anything you could think of, it's probably going to look good and really cute. So that's been my favorite this spring is just playing around with those kinds of color combos. Okay, so another favorite is blush, like just blush in general. I... I've just been loving blush. Lately when I'm getting ready, it's been so hard for me to pick which blush I want to wear because I want to wear all of them. <laughs> like I'm just, I'm loving my blush collection recently, but I did force myself to pick three that I've been especially loving. So two are cream blushes. I especially love cream blushes in a compact. They're very just like easy to throw on. Um, and these two have definitely been favorites recently. The Tower 28 Beach Please Cream Blush in the shade Magic Hour. I picked that up in the Sephora sale. And then a few months prior, I had picked up this Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush in the shade Nude Kiss. I love both of these. Today I'm wearing the Tower 28, and this Magic Hour shade is so pretty. I feel like this will go with any look. It's kind of like a nude, beigey peach color. I really can't think of a look that this wouldn't complement. So easy. I like applying it with either my fingers or a sponge, honestly, or a brush. Just any, whatever I have nearby, or if I don't have a sponge or a brush nearby, I'll just take my fingers and tap it out. So, so nice. And then the Milani blush, I fell in love with even before the Tower 28. And I can honestly say these two formulas are so similar. So if you want to save a little bit of money, the Milani cream blushes are incredible. I don't really notice a whole lot of a difference in the formulas. If you don't want to spend the 20, I think it's $20 for that. The Milani one is so, so good and so similar. Very similar texture. They both have kind of like a slightly balmy cream texture, but it's not like greasy or anything. They don't really like set down to a powder. They kind of stay nice and hydrating on your cheeks, which I really like, but I also feel like they last well throughout the day despite being a cream blush. 
Um, if anything, the Milani one almost has better staying power, and that could just be because it's a slightly deeper shade, but, and it keeps my cheeks just looking so plump and dewy and just beautiful. So yeah, just loving those. I've been wanting to reach for those like every single day. And then a powder blush I recently rediscovered that I, <laughs> I can't believe I wasn't using this for as long as I was, wasn't. The Milani Baked Powder Blush in Luminoso. I do have the new version of this. I never had the old version. I've heard that the shades are slightly different. I don't know, I can't compare, but I'm I'm loving this new version. I had kind of fallen out of love with glowy blushes there for a minute, but I am back. I am loving them more than ever, and especially this formula. It is glowy, but it's not gonna look metallic on your cheeks. It just has the right amount of a very smooth sheen that it just works for a blush. It doesn't look like you're wearing a high, like a pink highlighter on your cheeks. It looks like a blush that just happens to have like this beautiful glowy sheen. And this color is just the perfect tone for summer for me. It's just this gorgeous, like, corally, but not too orange coral shade. I just, oh, I love that tone. I feel like, you know, if I don't want to pile a ton of products on my face all at once, like, especially in the summer, really loving just more minimal looks, I can just put this on as my only cheek product. It gives me a little bit of glow. It gives me a little bit of, like, a sun-kissed look. I also really like throwing this in the crease as an eyeshadow. I did an Instagram reel a couple weeks ago with a look that was very similar to this, and I wore this both on my cheeks and as an eyeshadow, and I just love how that just makes the look so cohesive. So I, I really just love throwing whatever blush I'm wearing into my crease just to tie everything together. While we're on on blush. Lately I've been loving like a really fluffy brush for blush and this is the one I've been using. This is the BH Cosmetics V2 brush. Actually I need to check and see if they still sell this. It looks like this is no longer available or it's harder to find than it once was. I don't see it on their website and it's out of stock on Beauty Bay so that's a bummer but even if you don't have this exact brush maybe you have a brush in your collection that's this kind of shape. It's a nice like tapered kind of very rounded brush and I like how it's not super super dense and targeted like it just allows me to get a much more blended diffused application of blush. I'll show you the brush that I used to use a lot. This is the brush from EcoTools that I used to use. I used this brush exclusively for years and it's still a good brush. It's There's nothing wrong with it but I just I don't know I've just been preferring something a little bit fluffier and bigger for blush but this is the EcoTools Precision blush brush and you can see it's just a lot more targeted, a lot more dense, doesn't have as much of like a fluff and a taper to it and I just, I've been using this BH Cosmetics brush every single day. And speaking of brushes, I'm having a lot of really nice segues here. Um, another brush I have been loving, and this is another one from the Angie Hot and Flashy collection from BK Beauty. This is the A506. I have been loving this for concealer, so here's an up close look at the shape. You can see it's very angled and pinched in. So on this side you have like a really nice steep taper there and I feel like it's just the right size to blend out concealer. I don't normally like brushes for concealer but this is what I use today with that Kosas concealer. And I like to just kind of stamp it in rather than go back and forth because I feel like that's the thing that will often cause streaking when you use a brush to blend out complexion products is if you like rub back and forth, but I like to just kind of pat, 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 kind of like I would if I were using a sponge. But this shape brush is just so perfect for getting in there into like the, the real like inner corner of your eye and just blending all the way out. It's such a good brush. That is my favorite, I think, from the Angie Hot and Flashy collection. I've been loving all of them. <laughs> There's some really good like little mini blending eye brushes in that collection too. So if you were thinking about picking something up from that collection, this one is a real standout to me, but they're all amazing. You really can't go wrong if you see something that looks like a shape that you would like. I just, I love, <laughs> I love BK Beauty brushes. I like them even better than Sigma. I think they're just a little bit fluffier and they just have a bit of a softer, less synthetic feel. Even though the bristles are synthetic, they don't feel synthetic. All right, another quick couple of makeup favorites. One is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. This is also what I'm wearing today. I'm back in a loose powder phase. I mean, I'm still loving pressed powders too, but for a while there, I really preferred pressed powders over loose powders, but this loose powder has really flipped the switch for me and I am loving this for the under eyes, for the face. Today I just took this on my under eyes and like my t-zone. When I wear cream blush I don't really like to set my cream products, I like to just let them be dewy. So I mainly just set the parts of my face where I feel like I have like really prominent pores or where I might have some shine peeking through throughout the day. And this is perfect. 
It's not shimmery or metallic or anything, even though it's called the Halo Glow Powder. It just gives you like a little bit of a healthy luminosity. So it's not going to look dry and cakey and crepey, especially on the under eyes. You can get a very nice thin application of this because it's very finely milled. And yeah, I just love this. I have the shade Light. It does come in a few shades. But Light is basically like a translucent powder. Also been loving the Urban Decay Lash Freak. This is what I have on my lashes today. Whenever I wear this, I get a lot of comments like, your lashes look so good, they look so long. It's this. It's 100% it's this mascara. It makes my lashes look so long and ridiculous. I have the mini of this, which I would recommend picking up the mini because it's like half the price of the full size and you do get still quite a lot of use out of it. This just allows you to get such thick, dramatic, long looking lashes, unlike anything else. If you don't like a super dramatic eyelash look, then you probably wouldn't care for this, but if you're willing to put up with like a little bit of clumping for that super dramatic look, I think you'll really like this. A lip product I've been loving, let me add a little bit more of this on. This is such, such a nice product. I picked this up during the Black Friday sale in 2021 and I kind of didn't use it for a while just because it's not really a color that I wear in the winter. But this is the e.l.f. Hydrating Core Lip Shine in the shade Cheery. If you like just like a sheer, balmy sort of lip color, this is it. It has kind of a heart-shaped like hydrating core in there that's clear, but it just, it feels like a lip balm. It gives you like a pretty good amount of color, like it is pretty pigmented, but it's not as pigmented as like a standard bullet lipstick. You are going to have to reapply this throughout the day, like this isn't going to last all day or anything, but I don't mind that because it just feels so comfortable and it looks so fresh and I love the color. I think it's really the color of this specifically that I'm especially loving. It's This is the perfect kind of sheer coral. I like how it doesn't have too much pink to it. I don't know how to best describe it. It's almost like a salmon-y reddish coral, but it's also not too like yellowy orange. Yeah, it's just like the perfect, perfect shade. It I feel like it looks really flattering, especially on my skin tone, and it also makes my teeth look whiter. Some corals will almost make your teeth look too yellow. This. I really can't get enough of this. This is like a throw it in your purse kind of lip color. This is just what I've been wanting to reach for every single day basically, so. Had to mention that and I think it's like six bucks. Now I wanna buy more shades of this and I also really wanna try the other kind of sheer balmy lipstick that e.l.f. has. What is it called? I think it's called their Lip Slicks. Yeah, the Sheer Slick lipsticks. I'm curious how that formula compares to this one because it seems like it would be similar and I know that's a really popular formula as well. So if you've tried that one, let me know if you have any favorite shades. Real quick, I do also have a fragrance that I've been loving. This, I actually got this as a little point perk from Sephora, but this is from the brand Clean Reserve and it's the Skin Fragrance. This is so good. I have to say, I really don't care for a roller ball of any kind. I just don't like, first of all, I don't like that it gets like dead skin cells like down in there and, I also feel like you don't get a full picture of what the scent is going to smell like because something about a spray, I feel like it just, the scent projects a little bit more, whereas this like kind of, you only really smell it right there on your skin. But this is absolutely going on my wish list to eventually pick up a full size. If you like Pillow Talk Poet from Pinrose, this is, it's not the same at all, but I think if you like that kind of scent, you're going to like this one too. They also, there was one day that I layered the two together and wow, they made such a beautiful combo. But this, it's fresh, but it's warm at the same time. So I think it makes a really good summer scent for that reason. To me, this is just a really inoffensive fragrance. Like I feel like this is the kind of thing you could wear anywhere. You could wear it on a date night. You could wear it to the office. You could wear it to the farmer's market. Like it kind of just suits any occasion. I feel like a lot of people would really like this. I've been loving it. I am already like halfway through this little roller ball. Okay, I wanted to mention a couple of fails. I mean, they're, they're not total fails. Like I don't think these are fails for everyone. Like I think some people would like these, but first off we have a body SPF from Kapari. This is their Sun Shield Body Glow Broad Spectrum SPF 50. This is 40 minute sweat and water resistant, which is great for like outdoor activities. And this is a chemical sunscreen, which I do prefer chemical sunscreens on my body because I just, I don't like the, the heavy feeling of a mineral sunscreen. But unfortunately, I really cannot stand the feeling of this on my skin. It, it is an oil, like it is a straight up oil. And if you're applying the generous amount that you're supposed to to get the full protection, 
it just feels like this slippery, slick film of oil on your skin. It never really like sinks in. And to be fair, I'm not really much of a, an oil person. Like I don't typically use, if I'm using a body oil, I'm gonna mix it in with my body lotion. I don't really use facial oils either. I just, I don't really like the feeling of an oil like sitting on my skin, sliding around. That's just not my favorite feeling. And if you like the feeling of an oil on your skin, you might enjoy this, but I just feel like I can, the only thing I can think of when I'm wearing this is I'm imagining being at the beach wearing this and just having sand like sticking to me all over my body and that alone just, oh. I am really liking Kapari's new mineral face sunscreen. That was also included in my sunscreen roundup. That is a really nice one, but this, I really can't stand the feeling of this on my skin. I'm probably going to see if like a friend or my mom would enjoy this, but it's just not, ooh, I, I don't like that feeling on my skin. But if you are looking for a good body sunscreen, I have to re-recommend the Paula's Choice Extra Care Non-Greasy Sunscreen with SPF 50. This is water resistant as well. This is my favorite body sunscreen. I've been wearing it a lot lately. Whenever we go on a walk, I just throw some of this on. I love how lightweight this is. It sinks in quickly. It doesn't really feel like sticky. It says that it um, sets to a soft matte finish, which I would agree with. It doesn't stick around and feel tacky on your skin. It does kind of sink in and set. That's my favorite. I've repurchased it multiple times. And I think it's like 15 bucks for this five fluid ounce size. You can also use this on the face if your face can tolerate chemical sunscreens. You could also use it for that and get you know even more bang for your buck there. Okay, so the final fail and just thing that I have not been loving, this is like a newer product. I tested this out in my testing new makeup video a few weeks ago where I tried a few things I picked up in the Sephora sale and then a couple things I'd received in PR. This is from Aether Beauty and it's their Desert Sky Highlighting Oil. Once again, to be fair, I'm not a big oil person. I don't really like using an oil highlighter on top of my makeup. I just feel like it, it doesn't jive well with a foundation like it's just it's gonna lift up the foundation so I don't like it for that purpose um, this is also something that you could wear underneath foundation or as like a body highlighter which is probably the way that I will use it I have to say this is a stunning color like let me shake this up I mean look at that that is gorgeous so if you like this kind of a product I think you would enjoy it but here's the big fatal flaw of this product to me and that is it separates so easily. So as this is sitting either on my vanity or in my drawer, the kind of shimmer pigment will all sink down to the bottom. And it's really hard to get it to mix all back together again because there's no little shaker bead in there. I just feel like if they would have included one of those little beads, it would have made a world of difference for this because See, even now, like I've been shaking it for a while and there's still more shimmer pigment in the bottom than there is at the top. So I, you know, Aether is big on like minimal packaging, which I really appreciate. So maybe that's why they didn't include the bead because it was just like an extra thing that I'm sure is not recyclable. But I mean, come on, could you just give us like one bead? Because it would have made us a big difference. That's like the main thing that I just feel like makes this kind of a hassle to use because I have to sit there and shake it for a really long time. And even then I feel like I can't get the pigment to like redistribute evenly back through the oil. So I just feel like for the price, it's kind of annoying to have to deal with that. So not a bad product altogether, but it's just like that one little thing just kind of makes it a little annoying. I think that's everything. I feel like this was a really long video, but it's been a while since I've just done a big things I'm loving roundup with a couple little fails sprinkled in there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear down below what are some either products or techniques that you've been loving recently. Um, I just feel like this time of year really reinvigorates my love of makeup and just creativity with makeup. So anyway, I hope that you guys have an amazing rest of your day. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you've not already. Also feel free to check out the Patreon if you'd like to support my channel that way. And I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.